Addison Lee is Britain's biggest minicab firm, a £200 million company which books 25,000 journeys a day. Can I take the job number for the booking, please? Can you just call about five minutes before the book time? And where are we going, please? The world of taxis used to be a bloke's business. Traditionally, the minicab driver comes off the road, works in the office, they sit around smoking fags and talk about football. But the arrival of women has created a problem. <coughs> Babies. Oh, darling. These bundles of joy can halt careers in their tracks. Childcare now is exorbitantly expensive. It's £943 a month. So the company are about to trial a radical American scheme that allows babies in the office. It would make me feel happier if I could see her more often. I'll feel more involved in her life. I feel like I'm a part-time mum now. It does make me feel a bit sad at times. To succeed, eight parents must combine their day job <coughs> with being mummy and daddy. Oh, after all that, that you don't want Nyla, mummy's going to work now, OK? No. OK, that's fine. That's all done for you. Is there anything else? Yeah. Yes, that's a baby in the background. November 9797. 9, 7. November 97. This isn't going to work, is it? And prove the doubters wrong. She in a workplace. What's there to discuss? There's nothing to discuss. They shouldn't be there, should they? But can the taxi business and babies start a workplace revolution? It's nice, yeah, but it is a kind of a hard sell environment. Obviously, I don't want it too airy fairy in here. Or will this be one journey that all ends in tears? Worst case scenario is it is a complete disaster and the babies scream the whole time and the business comes to a standstill. Can I have my agenda back, please? With three and a half thousand cars and 5,000 employees, Addison Lee is Britain's largest minicab firm. No one likes a cab to be late. So in this business, every second counts. Time is money. Hello, good afternoon. Can I take your number? The price will be 11 pounds. When would you like the car for? Historically, it's been a male industry. car was yesterday. <laughs> but for managing director Liam Griffin, Times are changing. Nearly a third of his office staff are women, and they're having families of their own. It takes time to replace them. It takes time to train up their replacements. And ideally, we'd have kept them. <coughs> it's not just the business that suffers. Across Britain, parents struggle with the cost of childcare, and working mums spend an average of just an hour and 20 minutes a day caring for their kids. I don't want to work too much so that I never get to spend time with the kids. I can be working while they're with me and I can also be bonding with them at the same time. <laughs> to solve these problems, Liam's going to do something radical. In America, over 170 companies run babies at work schemes, allowing parents to bring their babies into the office. Not in a crash or a nursery, but right next to them at their desks. If someone brought this up and mentioned it to you in a pub, you just go, what a stupid idea. It's, it's, it is, and it, when you initially hear it, you think, well, that will never work. Addison Lee will be the first British company to try out this scheme. As supportive as I am of this concept, if it's not working, we can't carry on. We can't persevere just for the sake of it. There's a big risk here, and if, if it doesn't work in this one day, then, you know, we will have to you know, call it a day at that point. For Liam, parenting and work is something that's close to his heart. My wife's been through a similar scenario. She, she was a teacher, had the children, wanted to come back to work, and there's a tear there, there's a draw, there's, yes, I want to go back to work, but I don't want to leave my kid. So I've been there, I've seen it firsthand, so I can relate to it a lot more now that I've been there. So when you put all those in the pot, 
I think, you know, let's, let's give it a go. Let's see what we can do for these mothers. Liam's head of human resources, Claire, has been with the company for over five years. It will be her job to manage the trial, and she's curious about it for her own reasons. On a personal level, this experiment is very relevant. Um, you know, I'm mid-30s, early 30s, mid-30s. Um, of course, children has crossed my mind. Of course, it is on my radar. I definitely want to be a mum. I definitely want children, all of those things. But have I held back a certain, because of my career? Yes, I definitely have. I don't feel upset about that. That's a choice I've made. But I definitely think that I know if I had a baby, I'd, I'd want to come back to work quite soon. I'd want to come back after three or four months. But not everyone in the office shares the enthusiasm. A full-time job at Edison Lee is a full-time job, believe me. It's a busy, busy company, and we need to be on the ball all the time, otherwise things could go horribly wrong very quickly. You know, there are going to be six months coming in, screaming on the phone to a client, yes, sir, we're going to be, like, ten minutes for your parcel when there's a baby screaming in the background. It's a full-time job. Being a mum or a parent is a full-time job. End of. It can't work. It just can't work. No British company has ever done this before. For Liam, this is one of the biggest gambles of his career. There's going to be cost implications against this. There's going to be potentially loss of earnings from this. And you've got to worry about the brand. We spent a long time building this brand and we don't want to damage it just by trying to do something a bit clever. Safety is a top priority. So the office is baby-proofed from top to bottom under the guidance of health and safety officers. Any of the socket flashes that are missing, we should have the safety connectors and get as much of this clip back as possible. Could we all make a bit of a team effort just from the health and safety point of view? And if there's any bits and pieces that can be grabbed or pulled or that babies may be able to pick up, if you can get them into your drawers, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Spare office space is transformed into a playroom. Amongst the staff, 78 have children under two and 10 are currently on maternity leave. In total, eight mums and dads have agreed to take part in the trial. It's just me, me and Tyler. First-time mum, 23-year-old Thelma, has been with the company for four years. She's currently on maternity leave with her nine-week-old son, Tyler. Thelma's on her own and receives £128 a week in maternity pay. This scheme could provide her with a financial lifeline. My parents, they work full-time. So they don't have the time whatsoever to um, look after Tyler. I could leave him with a childminder, but I can't afford it. Since I heard about the project, to be honest, I was just really excited because I knew I wanted to go back to work earlier. So I said to myself, wow, this is, I can't believe it's actually come about. Financially, that will make a big difference to us because, because I don't want to be on benefits and, yeah, I'll be able to pay my rent and just be able to go on holiday and do normal things. But Thelma's call centre job is hard enough already, let alone with a baby. They've got a lot of targets that they need to meet and they're about customers, 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 so I can't imagine them willing to risk, you know, their losing their customers. <laughs> Ada is mum to Amira and has another child on the way. She'd love the scheme to work, but is worried about how disruptive babies in the office will be. Some of my colleagues do not like kids, so it's going to be a bit hard, and I'm very overprotective of Amira. I don't want her to be rejected, because it's not everybody's cup of tea to have children in the office. Eight volunteers with their nine babies, want to prove to Liam this scheme can work. At first, 
the trial will run for just one day. If it works, it will be extended for a whole month, giving Liam plenty of time to assess whether babies can be good for business. It's 8 a.m. and the start of the morning shift in the call center. This team handles 25,000 calls a day, with call durations strictly monitored. Wasted time means wasted money. The call center is where it all happens. It's the coal face. This has to be a ruthless machine in terms of running it because we get it right so often we, if we get it wrong once, then our customers don't forgive us. Yeah, so I thought this area is a bit more space that. 23 year old Zara is bringing in her two daughters, baby Alina and toddler Nyla. Give it a go, you come to me. Hello. Hello. You're not bothered, are you? <laughs> yeah, no problem. They're very chilled. Uh, not, they won't like that in the car. I think what we're going to do is we're going to put all the mothers in this area. We'll have, say, three mothers here. We'll get rid of some of the seats and space to play and, yeah. you know, so you're not, they're not just sat at a, at a table, really. <laughs> this is crazy. For the last two years, single mum Zara has been getting up before 4am so she can do the 6am shift and be home to see her daughters in the afternoon. It's exhausting and she still feels she doesn't see them enough. Every morning when I leave at 5.20 in the morning, I hate it. I just think I should be in bed with the kids. When I walk out the door, I just think, oh, I just want to rush back home and I just want to hurry up and finish. How cute! At two and a half, Nyla is the oldest child taking part in the experiment. Mom! Nyla, mummy's going to go... When mummy's going to work now, OK? No! Yeah, so you colour and eat your fruits, OK? OK? Good girl. Good morning, your fruit star. I can take your phone number, please. Mommy. I'm going to. Thank you for calling. Bye. Hey, what's wrong? The caller didn't say anything. He heard, he heard Alina. He just laughed. This trial day isn't just for mums. Next to arrive is car control manager Paul with his 11 month old daughter Lila. That's all right. And we've got piggies. Let's get piggies. He's been given step-by-step -step instructions from mum to keep their baby happy. This is mummy's list of what daddy should be doing. 8.30 breakfast, toast and Weetabig, so she can have cow's milk, but no sugar. 12.30 lunch, the various bits and pieces, and she can have water any time, always boiled. This has to be kept, stabled, and all the rest. 42-year-old Paul has worked at the company for 15 years. Baby Lila was a surprise addition to his family. Now he's keen to bring her to work because he doesn't want to miss out on seeing her grow up. Come on, dude. <laughs> yes. Rather than, you know, the nursery care teacher seeing it or mum seeing it, it would be nice just to say, well, OK, I was there the first time you fell over, you tried and took your first steps and that kind of situation. So it, it would be great for me. It would help mum. You know, I think it would make me very happy. Are you ready for a knife and fork, do you think? One floor up is the finance department. On a normal day, it's as quiet as a library. And apart from pricing assistant Monica, staffed entirely by men. So who's that? Who's that? Say hello. 
milk left on it. What's that? Look at that. <laughs> Uh, it's, there's, there's, there's a folder for it. Our job is basically attention to detail. If we don't get it right, then we will have a lot of drivers contact us the, the following week, a lot of queries on our side. Phones will be going off the hook, basically, so we need to be accurate and we need to be sure that we're paying the drivers correctly every week on every single job. So how will 22-month-old Natasia affect the office on such an important day? Bob, you're just taking the butter off it. You're supposed to eat all of it, Gogla. Can I have some? No, so it's mine. Monica is eager to expand her family, but unless this trial succeeds, she can't afford to. I'd love to have another child, but at the moment, financially, I can't see it working out. Currently, we're spending £4,500 a year on just one child two days a week at nursery, <laughs> there'd be no way I could find another £4,000, £5,000 a year. Okay, I know there's a couple of parents that are taking part in the experiment and a couple of you know, parents throughout the business that have maybe had one child and are actually holding back on having their second till the first one's in school because of the costs. And I just think that's a bad state of affairs where you are deciding when you're going to have your family, not based on when you want your children, but when you can afford to have them. And I just think that's a real shame. I need someone to do me a favour. Good, love, be careful, bud. Um, who's not doing anything? Uh, someone put the diaries in for me. Yeah. <laughs> right, so they go going. And so it's previous week. That's a, um, a charge. Do you want a pen? Here. Here. There you go. And uh, what's she writing on? That's fine. So they're going to dead 80s, yeah? Just delegated some few things out. <laughs> so right, I've done, I've put it all together, so I've just got to get a couple of emails back and I should be ready to go over the van, so... Hoping she'll stay like this. <laughs> she's a bit grumpy today, to be honest. She's, she's teething very badly. Um, so I hope she will be <laughs> okay today. In customer services, Ada arrives with her 22-month-old daughter, Amira, who's used to a nursery and a set routine. I know he's working in America, and I hope he will be working in here so he can help other mothers to go back to work and look after their child at the same time with uh, high expenses. <laughs> Say hello, Baba. Say hello. How are we? Oh, it's been we good? rush this morning. Yeah. Oh, nightmare. So I'm just feeding her because yeah. she's hungry now. And hopefully she will be in a better mood. Oh, dear. I don't want Amira to see me just as a mother looking after her. I want her to show, you know, that you have to work hard to, to get to where you to get to where you are, so yeah, that would be a good example for a mirror as well. Blow your nose. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you like to blow kisses? <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> She's so funny, we <laughs> are. We have such a good time at home, I tell you. <laughs> Just processing your account for you. Another high-pressure department taking on a new recruit is the sales team. All of our accounts work on a monthly credit facility. So otherwise, it's going to be like a uh, pay-as-you-go cash or credit card service. Stop pitching and get pitching. Stop pitching and get pitching. I don't want to pitch just in case the baby starts crying. So you've all got like 25 minutes to get that to green, yeah? The trial has barely begun, and the boss of the department already has his doubts. The guys are commission-based, but they do get a basic as well, but, you know, bulk of their wage is commission. They'll all pretend and say, oh, Tyron's being this and that, oh, we don't, you know, he doesn't want the babies in there, but we don't mind it. But you see that their commission figures ain't where they should be, you will see a different side to them, I can promise you. It's 10am. By now, 
car control manager Paul is usually well into his workload. So she's showing management, you know... Management potential. Absolutely. What your dad does in here is pretty much nothing. He's got all these other people doing all the work for him, and that's why he's called a manager. So we don't want to do no work, do we? We want to skive all day, play with babies. Oh, it's drawn on the mouth. Excellent. That's what I normally go in with, a bit of pen on me. There we go. I wish I brought my kid up, I'll tell you. We've uh, been in, yeah, 55 minutes, and we're now just about to log in. I'd like to say I'm about an hour behind now. All right, we can get you in your car. There. Have you written an email yet? We're now catching up. Just write one email, All right. just to see. Because then that means you've actually worked with the baby in the office. All. To Lee, I'm seeing logged in eventually. So you've emailed the MD saying I've logged in. Exactly. <laughs> she clocked in herself at half seven, so she's looking for a day's pay. Right, with, your yeah, with your finger? You, you clocked in with your finger. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Booked to work a late morning shift, mum of six, Shalon, is coming back from maternity leave specially to give the trial a go. I've got five boys, and Madika is my only girl, so I've got six kids. Um, the older ones, they're in uni and not living at home, and I've got a little one, Elijah. Um, he's in full-time school. Don't go in class without me. She's alarmed by the cost of childcare and doesn't want her new baby to keep her off the career ladder. I don't want to be stuck in my house all day, every day. I like that buzz of getting up and going out there and, you know, earning my living. And I don't think just because I have a baby, I should be shoved into a corner or locked out of sight. Why can't I still mingle and do all the things that I would normally do? I'll let you have your air and you have a good day, understand? All right, go ahead. OK, thank you. All right. Her hopes are high, but after five months off, she'll have to hit the ground running. This one on the end? Oh, no, give me the end, because then I can put the chair here. So that works out perfectly. Five minutes, all organised, <laughs> and she's ready to go. So you can spot the mum with the six children. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I really actually could do this. <laughs> no sooner has she arrived than she's in the hot seat. Good morning, Addison Lee. Shalon speaking. Can I take passenger's contact number, please? And, uh, are you going to be the passenger? All right. OK, so there's two of you. That's fine. And you want to go to the Gatwick Express. OK, hold on. And that's all booked for 12.45 this afternoon. Thanks, bye-bye. OK. Whew, that was nerve-wracking. I haven't taken a call in months, but I did it. <laughs> By 10.30 AM, all parents and babies are at their desks. And for the moment, at least, all is peaceful. I can't hear no children. Exactly. Marvellous, isn't it? Later. Come and see you in a minute later. <laughs> it's not right, is it? Hey, look, look at her, look, poor little love. She needs attention. Is that yours? Both of them? She's allowed to bring two in. That's not allowed, is it? Yeah, look. I'm going. No, I'm going. I don't have anything on the account. <laughs> We'll go for plan B, which is bottle time. Let's go to our bubble. It's feeding time for Lila, and Paul's management skills are being given a thorough test. Uh, here, Bob. There we go. And bubble. Oh, after all that, that you don't want Bob. There you go. Come. No. We'll go for plan C. Could eventually get up to D and E. There. Do you think you're going to sleep? You know you're on bubble. Uh, well, I'm going to go for like this then. I'll strap you in. But we're not going in a car. We'll keep you there. And you can go hide. There. 
You go and I see the place in there. No. Uh, if I leave her alone for a few minutes, she just goes into her own thing and she'll go to sleep. That's the plan. Can I put you back in? Oh, no, okay, you're gonna sit on my lap. You're gonna sit on my lap. For Zara, the early signs are promising. Uh, what's wrong? Uh, huh? Jump. Okay, baby. You sit on mummy's lap, okay? Good morning. If Rich Zara can take no? the account number, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, is this cash or account? OK, can I start by taking your phone number, please? OK, so that's the total price of £22.30. Cars booked for 10 a.m. this morning. Thank you for calling. Take care. Bye. She's staying on top of her work and has discovered another benefit of the trial. No? OK, OK. I need to rest a OK, Naila, are you going to come with Mummy? Do you want to use my office yeah. for breastfeeding? Okay. I've just put all the blinds down, look. Oh, OK. Just go around Hello. Le left here. All oh, right, She's okay. here, yeah? Mm-hmm. Baby. Right. This is a really good thing. I get to breastfeed her during the day, instead of her just staying without it. So what I'm going to do, just breastfeed her and then go back on the phones. Each of the parents has nominated a buddy to help out in emergencies. Paul's job involves external meetings, so it's not long before his buddy, head of HR, Claire, is asked to step in. When she wakes up, or if she wakes up, in the next 20 minutes or so, just take her out. I can just get her out of that. Yeah, just, seat. you know, comfort for her for a minute or two. I'm hoping that she doesn't maybe need the toilet till you come back. Maybe. Hoping. Fingers crossed. How have you got on today so far this morning? In a way, he's actually pushing you. So rather than dilly dallying with one of the other departments, it's like, okay, I need this. Can we do this? How long is it going to take? So you're actually it's really less like, small talk, really. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But yeah, she's great at the moment. Off you go then. And, uh, I'll be back to speak as I can. Call me on the phone if there's any problems. Okay. Thank you. Right. <laughs> The kids all seem quite chill. They don't seem to be suffering from the fact that they're here. And that was my main worry, was are we not giving them the right development or, you know, are we being most cruel to children by bringing them in? But actually, I think they're really excited and looking look at all the new people, all everything that's going on. And to be honest, I don't think it's the kids that are bothered. I think it's the adults. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think they're really that bothered, as you can see. <laughs> Uh, She's going for the vintage. Right, well, there we are. There we are. Wow. Okay. Oh, According to experts, babies at work schemes can benefit both parents and children. Certainly, small amounts of time in the work environment for the child uh, could well be beneficial in terms of expanding the child's experience. Small periods like a day a week or two or three half days a week would almost certainly not be detrimental to the child. She's been all right, she? It's quite placid, this one. We don't mind babies if they behave like this. <laughs> That's what our drivers do. They drive into lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> It's late morning, and the staff are not only getting used to having the new recruits around, some are positively enjoying them. Bubbles make them go quiet, and then I say something about bubbles all kids love, and that worked perfectly for me today with the bubbles. <laughs> it's on your nose. Everybody was just like amazed about it and like, wow, kids about it. You know, there's something about children, I don't know, they just bring another side out of you as a, as a person. So they were all like, wow, you know, like, whoa, oh, and you know? So yeah, it was, the atmosphere definitely changed in the pool since they did it in that regard, yeah. <laughs> Go do it, you do it, you do it. Good luck, do it. <laughs> Hello, customer relations. 
directions. <laughs> and for Ada, trying to juggle her job with her very active toddler, the buddy system brings some much needed relief. It's been a hard day for me, so I'm having a rest for half an hour. Thank God. Yeah, she pulls it and off. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and the grandpas are mine. Yeah. Look. Ah, yeah, yeah, what we? Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to close it. Yeah. Now. And then you see what you Yeah. I haven't done much work. I've probably answered two free calls, which usually we answer about 10, 15. Uh, by now, I have done absolutely nothing, but I'm still exhausted. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great. People are going to be on the phone and we'll be making noise, won't we? Where are we going, please? Selfridges on Oxford Circus. 11.30 brings the first sign of major trouble. The queue in the call centre is getting longer and longer, and manager Emma has to step in. Just to remind you, the objective of this yeah, is that you're actually doing the job Stop, yeah. with the babies. Therefore, the buddies, that role should be that if you need to go for a comfort break to the toilet or if the baby's crying while you're actually taking a book in, that's where the buddies step in, take the baby off you. So we need to change the dynamic now because I need the buddies to do some work today, yeah? yeah. <laughs> got a big task ahead of you because you've got two jobs, but I need you to, to take book-ins. Good luck. Yeah. Round two. Round two. <laughs> With over 2,000 calls an hour coming in, all workers are closely monitored. Emma is keeping an eagle eye on the mum's performance. The buddies have taken the role of nannies and therefore the mums are finding it fantastically easy, actually, um, because they're just sitting there and somebody's looking after their child. So I've just literally had to go out and speak to all of the buddies and just gently remind them, really, of the objective um, so that they all carry on with their job. Thank you. And when would you like your car? Yes, of course. How can I help? Do you want in? Up on the fourth floor in customer services, Amira's enthusiasm for the office is beginning to wane. In this department, each agent has a daily target of 40 calls, but Ada is falling way behind, and she's worried Amir is affecting her colleagues. Her cries are even reaching the far end of the office. And as you can hear, there's a, a little bit of noise coming at the moment. It did happen when I was on the telephone, and the customer uh, mentioned it, but can I just let them know exactly what was going on and they seemed up for it. There are sides of the argument that it can work, but then there are sides of the argument that it couldn't work. You know, I'm, unfortunately at the moment I'm sitting on the fence. Mum Ada is fast approaching crisis point. Just hearing her screaming makes me really sad now. Um, it's the environment, the, the atmosphere, it's, everything is new for her, so I think that's why she's behaving that way. <laughs> On the second floor, the finance team are also under pressure. On a normal Thursday by 1pm, the team would have processed the wages for all their drivers. Monica holds a key role, cross-checking timesheets, bonuses and rates. You can do it on this side, but not on, this, not on the other side, OK? But with one eye on Natasia, it's now 2.30 and she's nowhere near finished. OK, sorry, that way round. Oh, okay. A lot harder than Tessa being here. I'm, I'm not able to... I thought I was quite a good multitasker, but I'm not able to, to do a few things at once, especially when I have a nearly two-year-old running around screaming for attention also and not being, wanting to be in this environment. So I'm, un I'm unable to be as efficient in my job as I normally am. Monica, I think, has found it difficult. Certainly, uh, with checking process, she, she sat there and obviously trying to do things like that, but found it difficult. She's probably a couple of hours behind on what she, where she'd normally be. So, as well as passing other tasks on to other people. Yeah. Yeah. There's just three hours before close of business, 
to get all three and a half thousand drivers paid. Obviously, we can't do anything about that till that does. Okay. So at the moment, what are you guys doing in between? Do you want to start credit card stuff? We're just going to undo the gross and that's it. But is that good? that's going to affect my bands? That's going to affect your bands. So I'm just trying to figure out at the moment what, who's doing what, so we can get as much done as possible. I think we'll be OK, yeah. We've never had a late payment, have we? We've never had a late payment? Never had a late payment. Never had a late payment for a driver, so... It's can't it. start now just because we've got a little tattoo in the room, can we? For the first time in 30 years, the driver's wages may not be paid on time. Monica's dreams of saving on childcare and expanding her family are fading fast. If that was to ideally work out and I could have Natasia up with me or, you know, that would probably push us to think we could financially survive if we had another child. And I love Natasia so much. It just breaks my heart thinking... I couldn't imagine her just being on her own. I just feel like, you know, when you feel like you've worked so hard and you continue to work so hard and it just doesn't... You don't feel like you always... You, you never... You always feel like you're not doing enough. And with Natasha, I just don't... I, I think that's just every mum. I think every mum probably feels the same as I do. We always feel like we're not doing enough. With perfect timing, Natasha falls asleep. Monica gets some peace and 3,500 drivers get their wages. I was very lucky that Natasha slept and given me time to do everything that we... that went wrong, giving us time to rectify that. And, um, yeah, otherwise I would have had to have delegated a lot more stuff out and I didn't have to do that. Head of HR, Claire, is keen to have a child and wants the trial to succeed. But she's heard the boys in the sales team aren't happy. If you're dealing with, you know, big clients and, and you've got a baby screaming next to you, that client is not and very and professional. Also, and it all goes down to the, uh, all goes down to the customer as well, because if they're ringing into a call at the taxi, they can still hear the... Uh, yeah, and I think it's a bit unprofessional. They should just have a nursery on the fifth floor, for example. Yeah, but today, they've had, they've had it in the call centre, mm. where the clients have heard the babies in the background. And, like, oh, and they've, like, the agents have explained it, and some of the clients have been like, oh, that's really brilliant, what a good idea. Yeah. And for one or two days, oh, it's lovely, but I reckon for... Every day of your working no way. day, it could no never way. run. On this floor, in our department, in sales, it couldn't. And to be honest, it makes you realise how much of a break you have from your kids at home. When you oh, and then work. you come here and then you get <laughs> good all again. Hi there, just trying to see whether you received your account details. Because we are quite male, which is fine, you know, we have a really good time here. I think that it will maybe add a bit of a softer side, and I don't know, I'm just... It'll be interesting to see, I think, will that change the dynamic a bit? Down in the call centre, it's a different story. The mums' lives are being transformed for the better. My day is going great. I've managed to balance motherhood as well as um, work, because it's hard being cooped up in a house with a newborn 24-7. So it's nice to get out and get some fresh air, but in this case, I'm at work and it's some money, and I don't feel guilty at all bringing him into work, and I don't feel like I'm taking anything away from him because he's still beside me, and I'm still giving him all the attention I would have given him at home. And if I was at home, I'd either be doing some sort of cleaning or you know, whilst, because I can't play with them 24-7. I mean, listening to other people's opinions, I start to think, hmm, maybe it won't work. But now that I'm here and I've experienced it for myself, I think it's a great idea and I think it definitely would work now. So what can I say? Babies at work. Great idea. Hey, uh, um, I've got three, three, a guy. Six, Thank three, you. 3362. Three, Sorry, I need to get over to chauffeur service. I've got a guy who's book, uh, made a cash booking for the 25th. She's met so many different people already. I mean, she's been passed around the office. Um, she's getting to know new children. She's still here with me, so she feels safe. Um, she's being fed, she's being changed, she's being stimulated. So I don't see any negatives for her. I am happy. It feels really good, to be honest. It feels really good to be back. And I thought I kind of forgot, because I was thinking, oh my god, I've been away for almost five months now. But after the initial 10, 15 minutes, maybe two, three phone calls, I was right back in the swing of things. I'll put in. Yes! <laughs> but Zara has two babies on her hands, and two-and-a-half-year-old Nyla is playing up. Nyla, 
I was getting bored. I'm sitting right there now with a colleague of mine. Do you want to come over here? Do you want to come over here? No? I feel so bad. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you. There you go. Hello. You don't want to colour no more? <laughs> Are you going to throw it? Yeah. No? Nile is getting bored. I'm thinking maybe I'm better off leaving her at nursery because she does have fun there. She enjoys herself with kids and she learns and she doesn't get bored. But I'll stick with Alina coming with me so I could get a good bonding with my baby. When both of them actually woke up and they saw I was with them, because they never do, first thing Alina said was mummy. Like, she was so amazed and I was like, oh, yes, it's mummy. So, yeah, I think it will be good. And also the whole breastfeeding, I just do it while she's with me. But for one parent, it's all become too much. Each mum and dad has been told they are free to take their child home at any time. At 4.20 p.m., Ada decides to call it a day. I'll be honest with you, um, I didn't manage to do any work. I've literally answered about maybe four calls. Amira's a handful. She's very active. Oh, 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 you broke the ball. Oh. Oh, mama. <laughs> oh. Nice. OK, let's go. I'm happy, actually, to go home. <laughs> With the trial's first resignation, nine babies are now eight. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. As a relieved Ada heads home, the fate of the scheme hangs in the balance. Thank you, Bye. <coughs> what time are you leaving? Uh, I'll be leaving at about 10 past four, past five. Oh, well, I've got a meeting at five anyway, so I'll be back Fine. by then. Cool. Yeah. Happy days. So, should we go and see how the others are getting on? Come on, then. HR manager Claire wants the trial to succeed and is hoping to discover it working smoothly. We're going to see the other baby. Hi, Peter. Hello, how are you? Good, are you? Very well, thank you. Got an addition today coming up with me. Okay. Going to the fourth floor, see so, ya. Yeah. Say hi, Peter. <laughs> She's a bit unsure. Oh, bye, bye, see you later. Bye. Where are we? Go and see. Go and see the other little babies. Oh, say hi. Oh, this is the bubba. Hello. Baby. It's made you brood, Baby. Yeah, it has actually. Okay. Yeah. I'm on some now. <laughs> yes. Have you found it? I wouldn't say easy, but it's, she's been a delight. Yeah, she's been fine. Yeah. It's nearing the end of a unique day. Most of the babies may be happy, but the thoughts of the managers are turning to the bottom line. The call board over there, the red and the green dots or circles on there, that denotes the amount of calls that they did. The green one means that only one person in the team did as many or the same amount of calls as what they did yesterday. The reds denote that they did less calls than what they did yesterday. So that would say to me that obviously having the babies in here has kind of like slowed down their workload a little bit. But we'll see. I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. Whilst it's been a positive experience for some parents... Others have struggled. The driver's payments only just made it out by the close of day. Today has not been as easy as I had planned or had envisaged. I mean, it was great as the novelty factor, but there's always a bit when I've gone back to my desk, 14, 16 emails that have come through in the last seven or eight minutes. Yeah, and I think I've got to be on top of them, I've got to be on top of them. At no point have I thought, no, I really shouldn't have done this. In my mind today, I was going to go to training. I thought, yeah, go to training, nice way to in the evening. Uh, 
On second thoughts, I'm going to go have an early night, uh, nice bath, relax in front of the sea, really veg out. It's been a hard day, but uh, yeah, early night tonight, definitely. Boys and girls. They've been in the office for just one day, but the babies have had a significant impact. Bye-bye. Don't bring your mum in next time. The question for MD Liam is whether he can afford to extend the trial for a whole month without wrecking the company's bottom line. Hi. The fate of the scheme and the hopes of the parents all rest with managing director Liam. Yes, I'm knackered, definitely. I hear the stats on the fourth floor weren't too clever. No, sales guys, I think only one performed to the same level as the day before. And what about your lot, Emma? How, how, did, how many calls did they take compared to, like, normal? It was quite telling, actually. Um, looking at Zara's stats, she took... Normally would take 27 calls an hour um, that she's been recently performing. That went down to 19. Paul, as a, sort of the only dad that I got to see, seemed to be faffing a bit compared to some of the mums that just came really? in, plonked the baby down, fed them, on you go. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Paul, I think, was milking it a little bit more than most. <laughs> how do we think it went? What do we think we can learn from it? I'm not sure. I'm still undecided about toddlers that can walk around. Agree. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. If, I'm not sure if that would work. But I definitely think ch children that aren't really mobile in terms of walking around, maybe they can crawl around, but physically yeah. walking around, I think could work. Being in charge of a £200 million company, Liam needs proof that it really can work. So he and Claire head to America the birthplace of the Babies at Work scheme. The Arizona State Department of Health has a turnover of $2 billion a year. It employs over 1,700 people and, to date, has raised 110 babies, with 10 currently in residence. In the United States, paid maternity leave is not a legal right, and many mothers who go back to work do so after just a few weeks. Babies at work schemes are a growing solution to this issue. From your boss's point of view, do they measure what happens to you on the day he comes in? Does anyone ever pull you on it or say, oh, you haven't done as much today? Is, is, is it... No. No? No. <laughs> no, they <laughs> don't do that. You know? Yeah, no, they're really good about it. How much productivity do you drop by? Um, I would say about a quarter or 25%. You, um, you do 25% mm -hmm. less work as Correct. a result? Correct, yes. Yeah. That's still 25% across the week, so you're, 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 you're going to lose 10 hours' work, which, so therefore, from a business point of view, our average salary, that would be costing us the best part of 70 quid a week. I'm a contractor here, a oh, consultant, okay. so I actually um, am very sensitive to that, and so then uh, I just don't invoice those hours then. I subtract oh, them, so oh, it doesn't right. really cost oh, anybody oh, right. anything. Oh, OK. So. Oh, OK. <laughs> The department's Babies at Work scheme has been running for 12 years. The man who currently oversees it is director Will Humble. Hi, Will. Oh, hi, you came. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, too. Nice to Thanks meet for you. the opportunity. Hi, well, you know. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, come on and have a seat. Let's Great. chat for a minute about it. Thank you. What, what do you have you. on your mind? What do you think so far? Well, we've had, yeah, we've certainly we've met a couple of the, uh, the ladies that are doing it. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems to be working really well, and everyone seems to be absolutely loving it, and it's, it's a great thing to have in place. It's sitting in this job, that's yeah. my main priority, which yeah. is to look at the agency as a whole. And this is a $2 billion a year agency. That's what our revenue stream is. And so I look at it like in order to keep this organization running, not just for today, but in the long run, we've got to build the infrastructure of middle managers who are going to be moving into those senior management positions. And we've invested a lot of effort into that middle management team. And a lot of them are women in their 30s, and they're having babies. And we can't afford <laughs> to lose them. So to me, it's really a business deal. So you don't have any reservations in the drop of productivity whilst they've got the kids here? It hasn't been a problem. Uh, but what we gain is a long-term increase in our productivity, and we build and continue to, uh, to, to reinforce uh, the commitment we have with our employees, which helps us in the long run to retain those critical employees that may have made another choice. I mean, most of these women have husbands that have jobs, and, you know, th you know they could probably stay home, yeah, you know? Just wanted to ask you about something else. We're looking at 
doing it beyond six months. I'd say that's brave. <laughs> but I'm not gonna say you can't do it. Mm. It's all a question of, you know, can you bring the resources that you need to make it work? We're in the public sector. I don't know if you guys are in the public or private, private. sector. So you're in the private sector. Mm. So that means you can go to somebody who can write a check to make it happen. Yeah, I would be the guy writing that check. And, I, and I'm tempted. I think, I think the reasons you give for, for have keeping and retaining any member of staff, that's the reason why we're looking at it. I mean, it's a, it, it's a good opportunity, and it's so easy to do. It really is. Well, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all your information. We'll go away a little bit more educated on it now. Yeah, How to do it. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck with the cause. Okay. We'll do. Thank Thanks. you very much, Mary. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. Thank Bye. Bye. I think it was good to talk to A, a boss, and B, a man. Because it's uh, everyone we've spoken to so far has been females, and they're probably a little bit more child orientated. So to hear a guy say that it's a good idea and that it's got buy-in and that it's got benefits, I take with a little bit more credibility. <laughs> so uh, that's why I, you know, that's why it's good to speak to him from my point of view. The reality of why he's got the scheme is, is he keeps the best staff and he retains the people that, that do the job best for him. That's what you want to do, isn't that's it? That's what I want to do. Keep, Keep all the best today. middle management women. Anyone in mind? Me. <laughs> <laughs> In the UK, work and parenting remain largely separate. The average cost of childcare for each baby under two is more than £5,000 per year. And a quarter of women who go on maternity leave don't return to work. For employers, this means a significant cost in terms of recruiting and training their replacements. Back at the office, it's decision time. Liam calls the parents into a meeting. Having now seen uh, how it works in America, what's your overview of what actually happened and what you saw? I didn't fully appreciate quite how easy... I, you know, I was the biggest sceptic of anyone when I first the idea was first floated. It was like, that's never going to work. Having seen it in place, it definitely does work. It's just up to what age limit it can work. The reaction of the mothers out there and the benefits that came with it were far more significant than, than I really thought they could be. I really think that we can um, do something quite, quite special and unique in the UK and make it work. We are committed to giving it a trial with, you know, you know, we are committed to trying uh, it. Without doubt, I think one of the things we did see, it does work. Having seen it in place, we are definitely going to be doing something at your desk. You know, I, I don't doubt that we will be able to make it work at somebody's desk. Now, Addison and Lee are going to extend the trial for an entire month. Next time, the company puts their £15 million monthly turnover at risk. We've had a customer complaint. Um, a passenger was expecting a vehicle this morning. Important meeting, six passengers, car's not arrived. But can the scheme convert the skeptics? Will the boss agree to keep the babies on permanently? Afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. It's been an interesting experiment. You know, it's, it's not been without its challenges. Whatever we decide today, it will affect people's lives in the future, it will affect people deciding to have family. So it's not a decision that we've taken lightly. And the decision is 